Good afternoon and welcome to Inspiration Wednesday. My name is Daryl Fleary. I'm a product manager with Trivantis. And we are super excited that we just released Lectora Online version 3. And so over the next hour, I'm going to spend some time and talk about the features in Lectora Online. As pretty much everybody knows, the, the big feature in Lectora Online is our responsive course design solution. We've talked a lot about that already in previous uh, sessions, and we'll talk more about that in the coming months as well, particularly as it also comes to our desktop product. I'll talk about responsive course design here today as well, but I also want to make sure to share some of the other new features in Lectora Online 3 um, also. I know that not everybody is ready to start developing mobile courses right away, and trust me, there are good things in there for those of you as well. So that's what we're going to head off to today. So here's our sort of roadmap, the things we're going to cover. We're going to take a look at responsive course design. We'll talk about the inheritance properties and how we manage the look of content between different types of devices. And then we'll also go into some of the other new features in Lectora Online 3, like automatic status tracking. That's something that was in the desktop product a couple releases ago, and people on the, lock, on the online side have been clamoring for it, and we're super excited to have that in now. We'll talk about some updates to the menu and table of contents objects. We've made some improvements to the progress bar as well. And then we'll look at a bunch of other features like uh, some variable replacement things, some uh, image optimization, etc., and some publishing things as well. As I mentioned, there's this link uh, that I talked about earlier. If you take that link, you'll see it takes you to our product page. And there you can see that there, there's information on a lot of other features, including some uh, associated videos, as well as you can um, click to get to the release notes or even see a listing of all the new features that are in this release, most of which I'm going to talk about today. So just wanted to point that out to you that that is available to you. So the first thing I want to do then is, like I said, begin with responsive course design. And so I'm going to flip over for just a second and show you the new interface for that. This is the new access to Lectora Online version 3. It's very similar into how it was laid out before with your recent titles and your task administration area and so forth. But the really cool thing here is this big new button in the middle that allows you to create new responsive titles. Now, by the way, and I'll show you this, we won't be just creating new responsive titles. We also allow you to convert your existing titles to be responsive as well and then make the necessary customizations on each device. So we'll talk about that also. So before I actually get into it, let me give you kind of a bit of an overview and then I'll hop over and actually go into the application. When you're creating a responsive title, what we're going to do is add at the top of the screen to your interface this responsive course design ribbon, or RCD bar, we call it for short. And you can see that it allows you to take a look at not only your desktop, which is where you'll build your primary content, but also look at how things are going to appear on the tablet in both portrait and landscape, and also on your phone in both portrait and landscape. Now, what Lectora will do is it will automatically scale and position the objects on your page to try to get a nice fit in, on those other devices. And we have this inheritance property. For those of you that are familiar with Lectora, we've always had inheritance down the title explorer. So if you did things at a, at a parent level, they would inherit to child levels as you went down. And we do the same thing now going across with this sort of Y formation, this split idea of our RCD inheritance bar. So anything that I do on the desktop will affect the tablet in both orientations. And you can see the little arrows here remind you of that. Anything I do on the tablet in landscape will also affect the phone in landscape. In other words, your phone in landscape will be, will you start off as sort of a smaller version of your tablet in landscape. And the same thing going to the left, what you do on your desktop will affect your tablet in portrait. And then what you do on your tablet in portrait will also carry down to your phone in portrait. 
So let me show you kind of how that looks with just this little sample. And then we'll actually go into the application. So if I were to click on my tablet landscape view, you'll see that it's exactly the same as my desktop view. And that's because we've always treated it that way, that essentially it's the same sort of scale and orientation, so you don't necessarily need to make changes on the tablet, unless, of course, you want to make some mobile-friendly changes, like change your mouse overs to finger taps or mouse clicks, that kind of thing. If I go down one more layer to the phone in landscape, you'll see it takes all of my content, including my theme, and sort of shrinks it to a default size for a phone. Now I mentioned themes. All of the themes in Lectora Online have been adjusted to be responsive. So if you have a theme, there's nothing you'll need to do to change that. It will automatically scale and adjust for you. The content itself will get scaled based on the width of this device. So we take the proportional width of how things were on the desktop and we apply that scaling factor down to the phone. Going the other direction from the desktop, what we do there, we have a lot more vertical space on the tablet and portrait view and the phone in portrait view. So what we do there, we scale the objects by width, and then we leave their Y position, their vertical position from the desktop, and we carry that straight across. That way things are spread out a little bit more and there's less uh, adjustments or customizations you'll need to make. And then whatever adjustments or customizations you make here on the tablet in portrait mode will carry down to your phone in portrait mode as well. So you can see on this little sample with the text block sort of how it's adjusting depending upon which device you're looking at. Now I mentioned that you can make customizations. Let me show you that. On each device, on the object properties now, you will be able to go to the properties regardless of which view you're looking at. So in this particular case, I'm looking at the, pro the position and size ribbon for my logo while I'm on my phone in portrait mode. And if you look at the properties ribbon, you'll notice that some of the properties are now in color, the labels are in color, versus others that are not. What we've done here in Lectora Online and coming up in Lectora Desktop as well. If you make customizations on the phone, in other words, if I move this object someplace uniquely on the phone, we'll change that property label to be an orange so you know that you made this unique change, in this case I put it at position 10, 12, uniquely on the phone. It's not coming down from what I would have gotten through my normal inheritance from the tablet. You'll notice over here on the right, my width and height, in other words, the size of this object, these labels are green, which means I made a change to the size of this object, and because it's green, you know I made that change here on the tablet. So my phone is inheriting the change to the size that I made on the tablet. Green for the tablet, orange for the phone. And these here in the middle, you notice these are blue. What that means is that these are properties that I can override or can change uniquely on my tablet or phone, but I haven't. If I had changed them, they would be brown, oh, excuse me, they'd be orange if I made the change on the phone, or these labels would be green if I made a change on the tablet. But again, no change was made. They're in color, so I know I can change them, but since they're not green or orange, I know I haven't actually changed them yet. That is the way we handle customizations in Lectora Online. So what I'm going to do now is hop over real quick into the application and kind of give you a quick tour of that. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new responsive title. So there won't be any great content there to show you, but you'll get the idea. Give it a second here as it tries to battle through our online and through GoToMeeting. All right, so I created a new responsive title. As you can see, this is just like Lectora, like you've always known it. You can add objects, do everything, just as you always have, no difference. Okay, just Lectora. However, 
once I have some objects on the page, and let me, uh, maybe I'll find it, see if I can find an image to insert. I would normally drag it in, but I um, have the GoToMeeting interface up, and I don't want to actually make a mess on my desktop. Okay, so now we have this image on our page. If we go to the phone, excuse me, to the tablet in landscape, you'll see that that's gonna look the same. If I go to the phone in landscape, you'll see that we've scaled it down a little bit. I mentioned the overrides. You'll notice here that the position and the size and the offsets for this object are all in color but they haven't changed color from the blue, so we know that I have not created an override. This is inheriting its normal position. If I were to maybe make this a little bit smaller and change the position, now you'll notice that my position labels have changed to orange, as have my size labels. And one more thing, let's say I'm on the home ribbon and I am not looking at the properties, Notice the outline, this, the adorner, the selection rectangle for this object has changed colors as well. So that tells me right away there's some property that I changed for this object here on the phone, orange for the phone. If I go back to the other side, and I'm just clicking through so you can kind of see them all. Again, we've scaled this position a little bit. It still has that regular looking selection rectangle, so I've made no overrides on this device. But let's say I wanted to make an override on this device. For whatever reason, maybe I don't even want this image to appear on this device. So I'm just gonna go ahead and take it off the screen completely on this device. Well, you see the, the selection rectangle changed to green, meaning I did something unique to this object in this green or tablet view. Obviously, if I look at my properties, you'll see that I changed the position of that object. And now because of our inheritance, anything that I do on the tablet is going to carry down to the phone. So this object will also be off the screen on the phone. Meaning if you were taking this course on your phone and looking at it in portrait mode, you would not see the surfer. If you rotated your phone to landscape, you would see the surfer. Kind of an odd example, but it gives me a chance to show you how you can customize in each view. Now, of course, maybe I really don't want her off the screen here. I can put her back on. And now we have a unique situation where she's going to appear on my tablet in landscape, but not on my tablet in portrait. That's the type of way, things you can do to make customizations. Now let's say you want to set everything back to how it was. You can come up here to the reset button and say, you know what, whatever object properties have been overridden in this particular view, I want to go ahead and reset them. Or maybe I want to reset them in all views and accept Lectora's normal responsive course design inheritance. I can do that as well. So now she's back in place here and you see the, the rectangle has changed back to normal color. Same thing down here and in the other views as well. That's how our responsive course design solution works. Again, there's a lot more information about it uh, available on the website. We've done other things to help you along. For example, we allow you to uh, apply page layouts to the page. If you apply a layout to the page, those layouts are all um, have all been adjusted to be responsive. So as you can see, we adjust the positions of things here. So layouts is a great way to get started. And of course, you can create a layout and save that as well. You just figure out how you want to look in each view, save it, and the next time you use it, you'll have that working for you just like you would like. One other thing I want to point out, if you make customizations in these other views, and you decide that you want to do something like move an object and you want it to move across all views even though you have customizations, what you can do is actually just use control shift and then when you move it in one view, it's going to move proportionally in all the other views as well. 
Right? So there's a lot of flexibility. I encourage you to play around with responsive course design, to take a look at the quick start guide um, as well, and really get your hands wet and working around with it. It's going to make things a lot, a lot easier for you. Now, some other new features came into play with responsive course design, and let me spend a minute and talk about those now as well. The first one I'm going to mention is there's a new action trigger called on-device rotation. What that allows you to do is set up things to say, you know what, if they're in landscape mode and they turn their device to portrait, Maybe I want to do something different. I want to show a different image. I don't want to show the video. I want to show a still image. Um, maybe I have an exercise that was built perfectly for landscape orientation. I don't even want them to do it in portrait. Maybe it's a drag and drop or something. So what you could do, you could set up an action that says, hey, if they rotate their device, give them a message that says, please rotate your device back to you know, the other orientation. So that's a new trigger that you can use for actions, device rotation. There's also a new reserved variable called current view. That variable will always know the value of what orientation or device your learner is looking at the content. The value of that variable will always contain one of these five things exactly as you see them here with capitalization and lack of spaces. It'll be desktop, tablet landscape, tablet portrait, phone landscape, or phone portrait. So to extend this example I was using, I could set up my exercise to say, I'm going to display a message on device rotation if my current view is equal to portrait, equal to tablet portrait, or equal to phone portrait, either condition. So if they rotate the device and we detect that they're in tablet portrait or phone portrait, we can display that message that says, please rotate your device back to landscape. And by the way, another way you could do this, I have if current view is equal to tablet portrait or current view is equal to phone portrait, I could have just done that in one step, right, and said if current view contains portrait, and that covers my ground either way. So you can now use the orientation and device as a condition for actions as well. Um, I'll tell you what, let me just pull back up Lectora and I'll just show you that real quick. I'm just going to add an action here. Here's my device rotation trigger. Perhaps that action is, like I said, to uh, display a message, whatever the message might be. And then here's my conditions. And you can see here, there's the current view variable. Okay, and I have all the options that I have for any other variable. Does it contain, does it equal, is it not equal to, et cetera. You have all those options available to you. Okay, one last thing. When you are testing your content, you can go to run mode, as always. And in run mode, you can also preview any of your devices and how they're going to look to the learner in that device. There's my message because I rotated my device. Okay. Let's not use up all of our time, though, here with Responsive. As I said, we'll talk more about that as we move along. Let's look at some of the other features that are also in Lectora Online 3. One of the big ones that's been much anticipated and waited for by everybody is automatic status tracking. This went into the desktop product a couple of versions ago, and as I said, people are very interested in having this available now in Lectora Online. So what Lectora Online will do is behind the scenes, it will automatically keep track of whether pages have been visited by your learners. And when I say pages, I mean chapters, sections, pages, tests, test sections, uh, and surveys. So as your learner hits a page in your title, it's going to automatically consider that page completed. And if that page is a child of something, which of course in this case is a child of the AU and really a child of the title, those things will be marked as in progress. As I get to the next page in my title, we mark that page as completed as well. The student continues on, they get to the next page. Now that page is marked as completed, 
that page is a child of the tools section, so that section now becomes in progress, and that section is in chapter one, so chapter one now becomes in progress. When they get to the next page, and by the way, I'm talking linearly, it doesn't have to be linear, of course. When they get to the next page, measuring tools, that page goes to completed. That's the last page in the tools section, so the tools section is automatically completed. The chapter, however, is still in progress. And you see how this goes. As I go through each page, it continues down until I finish the chapter. This page is completed, this section is completed, and now this was the last incomplete section in the chapter, so now the chapter is completed. This will happen automatically behind the scenes in Lectora and Lectora Online. You don't have to do anything. The other side of that is you don't have to use it either. It's not required for you to use. It doesn't change how things get reported to your learning management system. All it is is a way to you, for you to know within your title what they've done and what they haven't done so that then perhaps you can do, take different actions based on that. Now, as you might imagine, it's slightly different for tests. So let me just talk about that very quickly. Lector Online will still keep track of pages and as they get to each page in a test they will mark it as completed. Same thing in a survey. But here's the difference. With a graded test they ha or a survey they have to remember to submit that test or survey. If it's not submitted, we won't mark it as complete. That way you don't have a learner saying, but I took the test or I took the survey and they never actually submitted it. So even if they touch all the pages in a graded test or a survey, that graded test or survey will not automatically go to complete until they submit it. And the one other catch, if it's a graded test, they also have to pass it. So a graded test is not considered completed until it's not only submitted, but the score is of a passing nature. And that's consistent with how Lector Online works currently. Um, we would tell your LMS right now, for example, that the test is incomplete until it's passed. So even though this doesn't affect the LMS, we don't want you reporting in your title to the, to the learner, however you might do it through status indicator objects, which we'll talk about in a second, or anything else. We don't want you telling the learner that they completed the test if they haven't passed it. So that's consistent as well. And we'll talk, about, we'll talk about this more in upcoming webinars, and there'll be some other videos and things. In fact, there are videos already out on the website um, around this. So let me talk a little bit then, since we know it's tracking automatically this status of each page, let's talk about how you can show that, and that's through using status indicator objects. Now on your insert ribbon, there is an option to choose status indicator objects. You can choose stock status indicator objects, that is 12 objects that we've put into the media library. You can see there are different flavors here. Some are sort of normal and serious and others are sort of playful um, that you can put in. And the, you can use these to show the student whether they are not started in progress or have completed. You can use these stock status indicators or you can create your own your own custom ones, simply by putting in images for the states. The only image that's required is the completed image. You don't have to show in progress, you don't have to show not started. Like for example here on this page, you'll notice we're showing not started, but you might just leave those blank as well. Be entirely up to you. When you pick your status indicator object, all you have to do to get it to work is on the status indicator properties ribbon, you come over to the target field and there's the drop down list of all the chapters and sections and pages and things in your title and you just pick which one you want it to follow. Very simple, one little click. And now it will, it will always reflect, um, this one for example will always reflect what that GPS page is doing. In this case it's saying the GPS page is completed. Let's take a look at all of those just so you can get an idea. Again here are all of our 12 status indicator objects. You're looking at the not started state of the objects right now. So we have not taken a bite out of the apple. The beaker is empty. The check mark is, uh, you know, sort of translucent or opaque. Our progress meter is empty. We've got a red racing flag. It's a cloudy day. Um, our stoplight is red, etc. Once the learner touches a page within a chapter, that page is going to become completed. 
that chapter would go to in progress, for example, and this is what the in progress state would look like. You've taken a bite out of the apple, you're beginning to fill the beaker, your progress is moving along, the race is underway, the sun's starting to come out, your star is starting to fill in, etc. And when they've completed that chapter, then the objects will look like this. Oh, there we go. There we go. You've completed the apple, the beaker's full, the race is over, and so on. I'm getting a message that my audio popped out a little bit. Um, I, I hope you were able to catch that. But fortunately, I wasn't saying anything too critical. I'll just point that out again. Again, you have a not started state, an in progress state, and finally the completed state where the sun is out, the race is finished, the tasks are checked off, the apple is done. So that's how you can reflect the status of chapter sections and pages in your title simply by putting these status indicator objects on your page and then showing uh, in what they relate to. You can also include these status indicator objects within a table of contents, either the indented list view or the um, tree view. You can also include them in a menu object as well, and I'm going to talk about the menu object a little bit more in just a second. One other thing that you can do, since I mentioned we're keeping track of this chapter, sections, and pages, the status, you can use that information as an action condition. So let me kind of show you that. You can, you can actually force a page to be completed or force a page to be in progress or not started. Now you may be wondering why might you want to do that? Well, we have this new set completion status action. And the reason you might want to do that is, let's say you want them to complete an exercise on a page. You might set that page to in progress bef um, when they get there, force it to stay in progress until the page is completed, until the exercise is completed, and then mark it as complete. That way you can always tell if they did the exercise on the page. The not setting something to not started kind of works like a reset. It would reset that chapter and all the pages in it to not started. So it would look like they had never been in there before. If you set something to completed, it will say, oh, this chapter is completed, even if they've never been to any of the pages in that chapter before. Well, for example, let's say you have a pretest. Maybe they did really well on one section of your pretest, so you're going to set the status for the chapter that that, relate, that that information relates to. You might set that to completed so that they know they don't have to go to that chapter. There's an example for you. And as I said, you can use that information as a condition. And here's an example of that. Maybe when you get to a page, you want to show some text that says, welcome the first time they get there, or welcome back when they return. Or you want to force them, you want to hide the next button until they finish an exercise. But when they come back, you don't want to hide the next button every time they go to that page. They've already done the exercise. You might as well show the next button. So you can use status as an action condition. So for example, here, um, you can see that I've set this up to say, show the welcome page if the page is not started, meaning they haven't been here before, but show the welcome back text if they have been here before. Let me hop over to Lectora Online, and I'll just show you that quickly in that little sample I was doing. There we go. Um, this is a responsive title, but it doesn't matter. All your actions and conditions and everything work in responsive titles as well. So what I was talking about here was I'm just going to create a condition that says, not one of my regular variables, but one of my chapter, section, and page variables. If this page is not started, then I'm going to show this message. Otherwise, I may do something else, show a different message, etc. So that's how you would choose status as an action condition.
So here are the things that you can choose. You can check to see if a page is not, a page, I say a page, again, it could be a chapter, section, page, whatever. You can see if a page is not, is completed, is in progress, or is not started. You can also see the inverse relationship of those. Is it not completed? Meaning it's either not started or it's in progress, but it just is not completed. It's not in progress, meaning that's the same as saying it's not started or it's completed. It's no longer in progress. Or it is started. Is started would mean it's in progress or it's been completed. So you can check all of these different relationships against the chapter, section, page, whatever in your title, and then execute or choose not to execute actions um, based on that information. So that's something that we've been looking forward to getting into uh, Lector Online for a little while, and I'm very, very happy to say that that's now, um, now in there. By the way, for those of you that may be desktop users, currently you have is completed, is in progress, and is not started. In the next release of Lector Inspire and Lector Publisher, you will also get the inverse relationships. Okay, the next thing I want to talk about then is I want to talk about some changes to the menu creator object and the table of contents object. Again, I mentioned that we did some updates to those. With Lectora Online, you now have the full menu creator capability that we added, as I said, to the desktop about uh, a release or two ago. Let me show you that. So if I'm just going to come back here to my, um, my base page. If I were to insert a menu object, you can see now you have the full menu creator that allows you to see exactly what your menu item, what your menu is going to look like in a live preview. And that includes whatever colors you choose, et cetera. You'll see that updated as well all of this right here in your menu creator. You can also, you don't have to, you no longer have to set the menu style and the submenu style separately. You still can, but you can also come in and say, you know what, I'm just gonna lock this. I want my submenus to look just like my top layer menu. So with one click, you can accomplish that. All the other options that you had before are still here and available to you. But there is a new option, and that is, Create menu from table of contents. A lot of times people have been creating menus simply because they want a nicer way, a nicer looking way to go to the chapters and sections and pages within their titles. Now with Lector Online version 3, you can very simply, with one click, now you've got a menu that's going to represent all the chapters and sections and pages in your title. Doesn't show very well uh, in this example. So let me do this. Let me just add some more chapters here to my title and some more pages. And now if I go back to my menu object, you'll see that it dynamically updates and will keep track of everything. So you no longer have to update it yourself if you're using a menu to simulate or to access the chapters and sections and pages in your content. One other thing you'll notice, you can, as I mentioned, you can add status indicator objects very easily to your menu as well. Again, you just come in, pick the one you want, and now when your menu displays, it will also show the status uh, for those things. You can include pages if you want to as well. Again, one of the new things here is this included pages option. Previously in Lectora Online, on each page property, you would determine whether you wanted it to be included in a table of contents, which meant all your tables of contents had to be exactly the same. Now with this option, you can decide I want to not show this in this menu, and maybe I have another menu for a different chapter and I want to show different things. You have the ability now with your menus to determine what you want to include and what you don't want to include when, if you're, when you use this create from table of contents um, option. And I, I mentioned the, the um, table of contents as well. Let me add that object to my uh, title. So here's my table of contents. If I go to my table of contents properties, again, you'll notice a couple things. 
I can again, I can add status indicators into my table of contents. And I now have an included pages option with that as well. So again, I can have as many different tables of contents as I want, and I can uniquely choose what I want to include or not include in each of those tables of contents. So that's some of the improvements we've made, again, to make it easier for you to customize how you want your titles to look. We've also made some changes to the progress bar. With progress bars, you can now customize the look of your progress bars even further than you could before because you now have the ability to add a back, excuse me, a border color and border weight. So previously when you had a progress bar in your title, it always had that one line black edge around it. Now that's completely customizable for you, which is good because it allows you to do things like use a progress bar as a thermometer or as a, you know, meter for uh, an exercise or something. You can do a lot more with it now that you're not limited to how that looks. The other thing that you can do is with a custom progress bar, we, we now allow you to easily associate a variable value to your progress bar. In previous versions of Lectora Online, if you wanted to use a custom progress bar, you had to create a variable and then use a set progress bar action to set the bar to the value of that variable to do the unique things that you wanted to do. Well, since you always had to, or almost always had to, add a variable to do good things with the custom progress bar anyway, we went ahead and just automatically associated a variable with the progress bar for you that will automatically stay in sync. Now, you don't, you aren't required to use it, you certainly can. You can also perhaps link it to a different variable you already have in your title. Maybe you're keeping count of pages or, or something. So that's entirely up to you as well. But you now have the ability to sync, to easily link a progress, excuse me, a progress bar with a variable. And one other improvement we've made with the progress bar, or really with the action associated with the progress bar, and that is the step progress bar action. In previous versions of Lectora and Lectora Online, you could step the progress bar forward, but if for some reason you wanted to go backwards, you actually had to use a variable and then set the progress bar equal to the value of the variable. So I could step forward, but had to set going backwards. We've improved that ability here in Lectora Online version 3 and also coming in the next version of Lectora Inspire and Desktop or Inspire and Publisher, where you now can choose the direction of the step action. So now you can step it forward or step it backward equally as easily. You're not locked in to only the forward position. Okay, a few more goodies here to show you. We're not done yet, folks. There's still more. One of my favorite new features in Lectora Online 3, besides Responsive Course Design, which is without a doubt my absolute favorite new feature in Lectora Online 3. And that is the ability to add variables right in line with your text. And I'll show you what that means um, right now. Let me just open up another title. Um, actually, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna open up, I'm gonna open up this presentation title. We'll just go right to this page. What you can do now with Lectora Online is I could come in here to this text block and all I'd have to do in this text block, if I wanted to put something in there like the student's name, if I go to my text properties, I can now insert a variable value right here in my text block. So for example, maybe I want to put in um, this first name variable right there. One click, it's in, and now I can show it. I can also do that in tables and things like that. Again, I can choose it off the ribbon, or you know what? If I know the syntax, I can also just type it right in a line with my, um, my text. And this one is – okay. 
Now when this page gets run, you'll see it will fill in the information for you. Now I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, well, I could do that before with a change contents action. Yes, you're right. You could do it before with a change contents action. But what you could not do before with a change contents action, because this is in line in your text, it's just text. So you have the ability now to color this and style this and change this any way that you want and not affect the entire text block like you had to with your change contents action. So we've expanded the ability to include variables within your text. You still have the ability in the display message action. You still have that ability through the change contents action, but you now have the ability to type it right in line with your text as well, which and use it inside of tables, which I can tell you already, I'm already thinking of great ways to show data in my tables by using variables. Hey, hey Daryl, I don't mean to interrupt you, but a good question that uh, totally goes with what you're talking about right now. Uh, do capital, capitalization of variables count as well? Yeah, great question. Capitalization does count. First of all, if you have to type the syntax correctly, so you have to use capital right. VAR, that's how it's going to recognize that this is a variable. Now, if you don't mm -hmm. remember that, that's why, I, you know, I highly recommend as you're working with it, if you're not comfortable with that, that you just pick the variable from the drop-down list, and we take care of that syntax for you. Okay, so that's the first thing. Secondly, Lector is going to look to see if there's a variable by the name that you type here. So you need to insert your variable name exactly as you've named the variable. But again, you don't have to worry about any of that if you just pick it from the drop-down list. Okay, but it, it um, is case sensitive. It is looking for that, yes. It's looking to match. Okay. Yes. And then one more. You can use reserved and user variables, correct? You can use any variable okay. you want. Perfect. Yep. Just wanted to make sure. <laughs> yes. Um, so, for example, this might say, you know, um, you scored whatever on a test and just include a test score variable there or something. So this right. opens up a lot of possibilities. Yeah, I'm excited about this one. Thank you for jumping in, Gina. Yeah, sorry. No, no, no problem at all. No problem at all. All right. Go ahead. I'm going to mute myself again. Okay. Um, another thing <clears throat> that you can do, another new feature, you notice I have uh, increased, decreased text size. Well, that's something we as designers are always messing with, is we want our text a little bit bigger, a little bit smaller. And we have to go back over to the home ribbon, and we're constantly picking here what size do we want it. Oh, I want it 18, I want it 20, I don't know. Well, we've added these quick buttons for you that very easily will do the same thing that you could do in the drop-down list, but it allows you to do it much faster, saving you time and saving you clicks. You don't have to go and scroll and so forth. So that's not a huge feature, but I guarantee you that quick increase, decrease of text size is going to be a time-saving feature for you. The next one I'm going to mention is folder attachments. Previously in Lector Online on the insert ribbon, you in your attachments, you could insert um, a file, like a PDF file or something. Now you can actually insert an entire you can insert an entire zip file as well. Well, why would you want to do that? Well, maybe you have some content that you created in uh, Camtasia or something that needs all the files to run, so you want to bring the whole thing in a zip file. Or maybe you have something that you built in Captivate, and now you're coming over to Lectora Online, and you want to be able to show something that you built in Captivate in your new Lectora Online course. You can do that as well. So you have the ability now to attach folders as well as just files. Another neat feature in Lectora Online is the smooth page fade transition. So what that means is, let me just hop over here to my presentation. I think I still have it open somewhere. You'll notice we kind of, Lector Online has always wiped the page and reloaded the next page, wiped the page and reloaded the next page. That's not necessarily as friendly and pleasant looking as it could be. So what we've done in Lector Online version three is you can now come to your title and say, I want to instead, by default, you could do it page by page if you wanted to, but I'm here at the title level. You can say, you know what, give me a smoother fade transition for, um, for my title, for all the pages in my title. 
Now, if I were to run this again, I guess I'd have to publish it. I'm not sure, but you get that nice smooth uh, transition. We'll publish this in a minute, so we'll take a look at that uh, as well. Another option that's available to you in uh, Lectora Online 3 is image optimization. Now you may be wondering, what is, what is image optimization? Image optimization says, I brought images into my title that may or may not be being used at the optimal size. In other words, if I have a big image, but I shrink that image down for display on my page, then I have extra file space. I'm using extra file space for that image that I really need to have in my title. So uh, let's see, let's do this. Let me see if I can bring in an image here. Um, go to my desktop. Let me just, um, I'll tell you what, I'll grab my surfer. Don't know why I'm in a surfing mood today. All right, so here's my surfer, and there's my original size. Let's see if I make it smaller, if I can get this to be unoptimized. All right, so now this is the size I'm actually using it in my title. If I go to my tools ribbon and go to my resource manager, <clears throat> you can see here when I select my ride the wave resource that it's telling me it's not optimized. I have extra file size in it that I don't really need. So now I have the choice. Do I want to shrink this, the file storage down to just what's needed to display this image at this size, both in my working title and of course in my published content. So now I have the ability to come here and just say, yep, let me optimize this image. It's going to shrink it down. It's going to shrink my size down. It's going to shrink my file storage down. In this case, from 311 KB down to 85 KB. And that will really make it easy for you to keep your files as small as possible. So this is going to change the file in my working title, as well as obviously now in my published content. Now, another option, you may not want to change that in your published content. Maybe you have a uh, high resolution image, you want high resolution images on your iPad or something. You don't have to do it this way. When you publish your content, you now have the option to optimize just your published images. So you don't have to do it in your working title. You can wait till you publish and optimize there. And the only precaution is it will optimize all the images in your title. So if you want some images to be optimized and some not, you want some high resolution, some not, then do not select this checkbox. Just go ahead and do it individually in the resource manager like I did this one. But either way, you now have a lot of flexibility in making sure that you're not carrying around and shipping around extra file size that you don't need. Okay. So since I mentioned publishing, let me segue into a couple of publishing options as well. The first thing I want to do here, let me just cancel this. Let's pretend we, are, we need to publish this title to SCORM. And for most of you, this won't make a lot of difference, but I'm going to point this out anyway. We often get asked, do you support the PENS uh, publishing protocol, which is a, a newer protocol for um, communicating with a learning management system. And now with version 3.0 of Lector Online, we do support that PENS protocol as well, that package exchange notification services um, protocol. So most of you may not have to worry about it, but if you get asked by your administration people, does it support PENS publishing? The answer is now yes, it, we do. Okay, and let me go back to my um, HTML publish, because I want to show you something there. When I publish my title to HTML, it's going to go through a publishing check like it always does. And now it gives me a QR code that will allow me to scan this QR code on my mobile device and see how my title is going to look on a tablet or a phone. 
Well, this isn't all that interesting with a non-responsive title, right? So let me do this. Let me hop over and open up a responsive title, and we'll kind of see how that plays out. What I'm opening is a sample title. This sample title uh, is a great example of using responsive course design, and it actually comes with your instance of Lectora Online, so everybody has access to it. So you can see how the position and scaling happens going down to the other devices. And you can also see uh, when their customizations have been made on those devices. So for example, let me go here to my, just for illustration purposes, I'm gonna go here to my introduction page. You'll see here on my introduction page, we've got this green rectangle and we've got an image here and so on. And if we come down to the, phone, to the tablet in, port, in landscape, man, this gets hard. I can't tell you how many times I say the tablet and phone in phone mode. If we come down to the tablet in landscape mode, you'll see it's going to be the same as the desktop. If we come down to the phone in landscape, you'll see it's also a little bit smaller version of the same thing. Going the other way, you'll see we've rearranged this a bit. We've now put the green box and the image down here. So if I go to the properties, this is what we were talking about before, if we go to the properties of this object, you'll see that the position and size of this rectangle they're now listed, the labels are in green, which means we've created an override on this device. We're no longer accepting what would normally come through by Lectoris responsive inheritance. We went ahead and made a customization that we liked to this device. And then down here on the phone, we did the same thing. So that's how you can customize your devices to get whatever look you want to get for your titles. And we've done that in a number of different places throughout this title. And what I'm going to do now, I'm going to go ahead and publish the title. And it's going to run through and publish everything. And if you happen to have a barcode scanner on your phone or on your tablet, when the QR code or quick response code comes up, you are welcome to scan that and see how it actually is going to look on one of those devices and even rotate your device between orientations. So if you have a scanner on your phone go ahead, or tablet, go ahead and scan that now. Now, if you don't have a barcode scanner on your phone or your tablet, first of all, there are about a zillion of them available for free download on both the Google Play Store and the Apple App Store. So go on out and, and grab one. It's a great handy thing to have. But it's also not a requirement for previewing your title. It's handy, yes, but it's not a requirement. You can preview your title right here in the browser and you can see here, I'm looking at it on my desktop. We'll go over here and you'll see I get the same desktop experience that we just looked at. But check this out. If I grab the edge of my browser and I start to let me just make it a little taller here too so we can get all the views. If I start to shrink this a little bit, here's my desktop and also what my tablet in landscape mode would look like. As I shrink it, I can see what my phone in landscape is going to look like. If I go a little bit further, I can see how my tablet in portrait is going to look. And if I go a little further still, I can see how my phone in portrait is going to look. So the QR code is handy, but you could actually preview your content right here in the browser. And actually I say preview, the truth of the matter is you could actually publish your course put it up on your learning management system or your server. If your student dragged their browser just like I did, like Tor doesn't know the difference, they could actually theoretically take that course over in phone mode, continue doing their working all day long, and still run through the course just as though uh, they were taking it on the desktop. So that could be a convenience factor for you as well. But that, I'm still not done. Those aren't the only goodies that we've added in terms of publishing. One more option I want to point out, and this is great for our Lectora Online customers, you now also have the ability to publish to ReviewLink, which was previously only available to our desktop customers. 
So now with one click, you can publish your content up to review link. Review link is our cloud-based a review platform that allows an unlimited number of reviewers to that you assign through their email address to log into your content and take a look at it and leave comments in a threaded discussion format that also allows you to very easily um, export that data to a spreadsheet or to a PDF or whatever and see uh, and, and track what that information is doing, track that, their comments. Let me go ahead and log into ReviewLink real quick and we'll take a look at that. So here I'm in Review Link. By the way, one quick note, we have also opened up Review Link to users of Captivate and Storyline. So they can update their content, or if you're an old Captivate user and you're now on Lectora Online, but you have content that you want to review from Captivate, you can upload that as well. So here's my content up in Review Link. I can click Launch Content. Oh, sorry, I had a previous property set up here. Let me just open that up. Here's my content. I can roll through it just as I would on my desktop. But if someone had to leave a comment, maybe this doesn't look good, they can click the new comment button, enter a summary for the comment, enter the comment details, add attachments like a screenshot if they want to, whatever, submit the comment, and now that will go to be the developer. I can go through and check the comments. I can mark them as fixed. It would go back to the reviewer. They'll get a big thumbs up button or a thumbs down button, and they can go. The whole review process can happen right here in Review Link without having to send around, you know, PowerPoint slides or emails or anything at all. It all happens right here for you. <clears throat> and by the way, Review Link is also responsive, so you could actually review your published content for for a phone on your phone in Review Link. So that's a really cool feature. Just real quick, if I'm looking at my comments, I can I can filter this by all the different comments. I can look at my new comments. I can look at fixed comments, things were marked as not okay. I can filter it by reviewer, etc. All of this is out on the website for you to take a look at. Just go to reviewlink.com and there's plenty more information. Or if you go to that link I mentioned earlier, you can certainly uh, get to a lot of videos and information about ReviewLink as well. So with that, just to sort of put a bow on the rest of this presentation for today, let me just uh, hop over here to my, my wrap-up slide and do a quick summary for you. So new in Lectora Online version 3 is responsive course design and all the things we talked about there, the automatic inheritance in that sort of Y pattern out from the desktop to the tablet and then down to the phone in both orientations the automatic scaling and positioning of objects, but also the ability to create custom overrides to design the title and get the look that you want. Oh, you know what? One thing I didn't show you, I'm going to pause here for just a second. I meant to show you this at the beginning, and I apologize for not. I know we're close on time, but this is kind of important. I want to also point out, um, let's see here. It's not just new titles that you can create responsively. You can actually convert existing titles too. I'm going to open up a title here, and this could be a mistake because I'll be honest with you, I haven't really tried this particular title. This title was not designed to be a responsive course design title. This is actually a title I did at the Lectora User Conference a few months ago. But just for grins, let's see what happens if we turn this into a responsive title. So I'm going to come here to my design ribbon on my title options. I have to go through a whole lot of trouble to turn this into a responsive title, right? I'm kidding. It's one click. Okay, now it's a responsive title. That's all you have to do to convert your existing titles. Let's just see how things look um, very quickly. So here's my landscape tablet. It's going to look the same. I'm happy with that. Here's my phone. Uh, not too bad. I might have to go in and you know adjust my image a little bit here, but otherwise, not bad. If I go over to the portrait side, here's my tablet and portrait. Again, same thing. I have some image adjustment I need to do here, but otherwise not too bad. And I'm sure I'll have this same thing to do uh, down here on my phone. Okay. Let's, uh, but look, all my navigation's there, my header's there, everything else is there. Uh, I might need to change my, my presenter name a little bit. Not a problem. Let's pick another page just real quick and take a look. 
Here's some background information. Tablet looks pretty good in landscape. Phone, not too bad. You see we grew the page here to create some vertical scrolling. I might actually tighten that up a little bit if I wanted to change that around a little bit. But again, pretty minor customizations. On my tablet in portrait mode, looks pretty good. I could go ahead and use it just like that. And my phone in portrait mode, again, I may adjust it a little bit, but again, not too bad. So my point is, making these slight adjustments to customize it is gonna save you a ton of time over building it from scratch. Okay, so Sarah. that's all the time we have for that. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably um, so, what Gina was going to say. So let's go ahead and uh, jump into some questions. Go ahead, Gina. Um, yeah, so you were just covering, I was waiting because you were just going to go back to saying you covered the current view variable and the device rotate rotation trigger. Now I know why you're having trouble with that. <laughs> um, so there was a question. After current view equals, do you what would the value be? Phone portrait? Okay, great question. Uh, Okay. Yeah, and I want to be careful here that I don't say equals because it may okay. you may not want to use equals. Do I have a slide on that? I think I did. You may want to say it equals desktop, equals tablet landscape, equals any of these, or you could say it contains landscape or contains oh, yeah. tablet. You have all those choices available to you. Um, if I go over here real quick to my variable manager, and I choose my reserve variables. If I pick that current view variable, you get an explanation here uh, as well. Right, okay. Okay. So those would be the values. All right. Yes, ma'am. Um, and then one more. Can you add, actually two more. Can you add the device rotation action message to the course level, not just to specific elements? Yes, and I want to be careful that we don't get caught in the fact that I use the message as an example. All actions are available to you in Lectora online in RCD titles and non-RCD titles. So you, that action could be anything you want. So yes, you could say, but at the, at the title level, and in fact, let's pretend, for example, that you don't even want people to use portrait ever, right? You could put a message at the title level that says, hey, rotate back to landscape. And every time they turn their phone or whatever, they're gonna get that message. So yes, you can do it at any level, or any object, uh, however you want to do it. And it doesn't have to be a message. It can be any action that's available to you in Lector Online. Okay. And then um, how does the current view work with anything besides, oh, you explained that a little bit, besides equal. You could say contains sure. equal. Okay. Yep, it's yep. just a variable. You Sorry, can do the same things that. with that as you can do with any other variable. All right, and then I'm just looking real quick. Can you import titles from desktop to I know the answer to that. Can you import titles from desktop to Lector Online to make them responsive? Yes. That is a great question. Currently good... with, with Lectora 12, you cannot import your titles into Lectora Online. However, with the next version of Lectora uh, Inspire and Lectora Publisher, yes, you will again be able to bring your titles into Lectora Online, and you can move your titles from Lectora Online into Lectora Inspire and Lectora Publisher. Now, your question was, can I move my titles into Lectora Online to make them responsive? You won't have to do that uh, because Lectora Desktop will be responsive in the next release for that as well. So keep your eye out for notices about that. Yeah, I was just going to say that, and actually, uh, for our upcoming Inspiration Wednesdays in December, John Blackman, the, our CTO, is going to do a case study on actually pulling an older desktop uh, and making it responsive. So that'll be December 2nd, and then Daryl will present on our on what's desktop. what's new in, uh, in desktop, yeah. right. Yeah, which is exciting on the 9th of December. So yeah, um, sign up on the website. They should be available next week for those upcoming Inspiration Wednesdays. And then, of course, this is being recorded, so we'll have this session out on the community soon as well. Absolutely. Uh, there was a question, will the upgrade download to us um, for V... I'm, I'm assuming you're talking about desktop? Not yeah, with, with the desktop product, it'll be the same as it always has been. You'll get a notification that a new version is available for you to go out and, uh, and download. For Lectora Online users, of course, one of the beautiful things about being an online product is you always have the most current version available to you. And by the way, if we find a bug or something that's working, 
that's not working, it's a lot easier to fix that for you as well. So I, I love the online version. I love the collaboration and sharing that it allows me to do with my colleagues. And I love mm -hmm. the fact that I'm always on the most current version. Uh, Daryl, can we pull up that QR code while, while we're answering questions? Sure. Awesome. A real one? The one that you showed earlier. All right. uh, this one will be a little bit different, but that's okay. Anytime you publish HTML, you're, you'll get a QR code that will allow you to, to take a look. Um, if people want to look at the one, probably want to look at the one from the mobile course. Let me see if I yeah, can. Maybe from the RCD still, one. Yeah, let me see if I still have that open. Um, I don't think I do, but I can. Everyone was probably downloading barcode scanners while I was talking, so they want an opportunity <laughs> to, to take a quick shot of it. I, I know that's what's going on here. All right, so let's. Well, now they'll have a chance. Yeah. By the way, folks, right. I know we're a few minutes past the bottom of the hour. Uh, I love the fact that you're still here because that means you're interested, and I, I think that's great. Happy to share yeah, with I you. And I actually don't see any other questions that weren't answered, so while he's pulling that up, if you have any last-minute questions, just go ahead and type those in. Okay, there you go, folks. Um, while that's happening, let me just also mention, in case people are wondering, the next version of Lectora Inspire and Lectora Publisher, as I said, will include responsive course design. It will also include the update to the status action conditions, those inverse relationships. You can do more with status. It will include that step progress bar action to be able to step the progress bar uh, forward or backward. Uh, it will include that inline variable replacement, which allows you to put variables right inside your text and, more importantly, be able to format it uh, from font and color perspective. It will also include that quick increase and decrease uh, text size buttons and some other things as well. So a lot of great things to look forward to in the upcoming release of Lectora Inspire and Lectora uh, Publisher. Yeah, there's one good question, one last one. It looks like, best way to uninstall previous version to go to the new desktop version. Um, will they necessarily have to uninstall it? No, if you have a, a if you're current on maintenance, you'll get that upgrade notification, and you just click the upgrade button, and uh, we'll go ahead and take care of the rest. If you, for some reason, you need to uninstall, then you just do an uninstall like you do for any other application, and then um, run the new installation file. But our support group is certainly willing and happy to help you with that if you have an issue with that. Right, and then um, just one, okay, one more last question. Is there detailed <laughs> information concerning developer notes? That'll be the last one. <laughs> sure, okay, so I think I understand what the question is asking. And if you go to our information center, there is, lot, or AKA help, there is lots and lots of information in the information center about um, the new version. Actually, before you even get that far, let me just yep. clear out some of this. From the right here on the on the dashboard, you can go to the you can open a click and learn title. This click and learn title is updated for version three, and it walks you through all the different parts of the application and things you can do and how to build responsive titles and so forth. All of that's right there for you, right from a click within the application. There's a um, a number of videos and things out on the website. I mentioned that sample title is already included with the product, so there you have a lot of resources available to you to learn, in addition to, as I say, the information center that has lots and lots of information about working with Lector Online, as well as working with responsive content and so forth. Yeah, also if you click what's new, aren't there a couple links there as well? Yeah, let's see what's in the what's new. <laughs> so in the what's new, you get the full feature list of everything that's been added <coughs> into this uh, version. And as I mentioned, if you go to our product page on the website, and go to Lectora Online, here you've got all this information. There's some videos in here as well. If you click on more features, there's even more information and more videos and more things you can get to also in the community as well. Lots of great resources available to you. Yeah, thanks, Daryl. I'm 
I guess we'll we'll wrap up now. I know we took up a little more than we planned on, but it was great. Well, folks, thank you very much for coming out today. I really appreciate it. As Gina and I said, this will be recorded, so we'll get it posted up in the community as well. And I can't wait to see you guys building responsive titles and uh, sharing them in review link with me so I can take a peek. So everyone have a really terrific day, and uh, thank you again for joining.